Statline Scouting. We are once again trying to unearth some of minor league baseball's hidden gems, some of these best prospects that you won't find on a top 100 list, but could very well become big major league contributors down the line. And we do that primarily by looking at and interpreting the stats. Just the stats, just the performance. We don't care about how pretty their swing is or how intimidating they look on the mound or if they have an ugly girlfriend, meaning they lack confidence. With this being a late August edition of Statline Scouting, we're going to be looking at all levels of minor league baseball, including rookie ball, the lowest level of them all. We're going to be looking at some players as young as 17 years old in this episode, and they're a long way from the majors, but it may still be worth learning their names. But we will actually be kicking things off with a major leaguer by the name of Kerry Carpenter. Kerry Carpenter has played eight games for the Detroit Tigers this year, but we're really going to focus in on his performance in the minor league. So Kerry Carpenter, 6'2", bats left, throws right, DH slash outfielder. Look at some of his stats from 2022. He has, in the minors, 30 home runs in 97 games. It's absolutely unbelievable. 30 and 97. That's one of the best power performances in the minors at all this season. But what really kind of intrigued me is a huge shift in terms of his strikeout rates and walk rates as he was promoted from double A to triple A. So in double A, he was striking out 28% of the time, walking 6% of the time. In triple A, both those numbers were 12%. And it's just like he was doing sort of like almost a Vinny Pasquantino impression in AAA. And like Vinny Pasquantino, he's not from like a premier draft slot. 2019 June amateur draft, round 19 pick five. He was the 562nd player picked. He was picked by the Tigers. He's now up in the majors where he has a 123 WRC plus. He's had a couple homers, but he's only played eight games. So he retains prospect status. That was Kerry Carpenter's Fangraphs page. We now move on to MLB Pipeline, which is where we try to get just a glimpse at where the industry rates this player. Here's the list of the Detroit Tigers' top 30 prospects. According to MLB Pipeline, they have him at 15th, and I imagine he's quite the climber this year. It's possible he started the season not even in their top 30. But Kerry Carpenter, 15th ranked prospect in the Detroit Tigers system and in the big leagues, and that's a big deal. The Tigers have not had good hitting this year or honestly in previous years either. So when you have a prospect like this maybe come out of nowhere, have a huge year in the upper levels of the minors, that's worth paying attention to, especially in this last month or so in the season, especially if you're a Tigers fan because you're looking for any good hitting you can get. The next prospect we're going to look at is Jeremiah Estrada. Jeremiah Estrada is a six foot one right-handed pitching prospect. He's 23 years old and he is in the Chicago Cubs system. He was drafted round six, pick 30 in the 2017 June draft. And he is purely a reliever prospect. He has not really started in the minors at all. He hasn't started a single game. Most of his appearances, one to two innings. But this is someone that you look at and you think maybe we have just one of the next great relievers on our hands, especially if you're a Chicago Cubs fan. That's what you hope for. What I like about Jeremiah Estrada, and this is going to be a trend throughout this episode of Statline Scouting, is the promotions. Last season, he played in A-ball. He only pitched 23 innings, and then he was shut down. And then 2022, they start him in high A. He's great. Move him up to double A. He's great. And now he currently sits in triple A. Could we possibly see him in the majors this year? That would be very interesting to see. But everywhere he goes, this is what you look for in a big league reliever. It's the swing and miss stuff. The swing and miss stuff. 40% strikeout rate in A-ball last year, then 43% in high A this year, 35% in double A, 39% in triple A. Just that big swing and miss stuff. That is what you're looking for, particularly when you're talking about a power pitcher, a reliever. So we're hopping on the MLB pipeline here. This is the Chicago Cubs top 30 prospect list. And as we scroll down, you'll notice... Jeremiah Estrada's name is nowhere to be found, and I think that's a respectable decision. This is a player who is a reliever only, and I'm sure a lot of these pitchers have aspirations to be more than that. However, I do think he is a name worth knowing nonetheless. One more thing worth mentioning about Estrada here, he is a fly ball pitcher. You look at these ground ball rates, and they are not impressive at all. However, in 2022, he has only allowed one home run. He allowed one home run when he was playing in high A, double A and triple A, no home runs allowed yet. If he can continue to rack up strikeouts without allowing the long ball, that is something special. 
So this is a little change of pace here from some of the guys we've seen like Kerry Carpenter and Jeremiah Estrada just putting up video game numbers in the upper levels of the minors. This is Coleman Crow. Coleman Crow is a right-handed pitching prospect for the Los Angeles Angels. He was drafted in the 28th round of the 2019 draft. The 28th round. And he is 21, and he has played the entire season in AA, which is very, very impressive. The Angels have really challenged this guy. They had him pitching full season A ball at the age of 20, and at the age of 21, he's moved up to AA. Here's the thing about his AA numbers. They're not amazing. They're not, like, incredible. But what they all are is respectable. He started 19 games. He's pitched 103 innings. So he's averaging over five innings to start as a 21-year-old in AA. His ground ball rate, 48%. That's a little bit above average. Strikeout rate, just a little bit above average. Walk rate, 6%. That's pretty good. It's just about his age relative to the league he's playing in relative to the performance. Coming here, looking at the leaderboards for the AA level, you can see only 14 pitchers this season, age 21 or younger, have thrown 50 or more innings, have really made a mark on the AA level. Some of those names are big time. Kyle Harrison, Uri Perez, Taj Bradley, even Quinn Priester. These are all guys that would be considered top 100 prospects, some of them even like top 30 prospects in Major League Baseball right now. And there's Coleman Crow right there, Really impressive for his age and really impressive considering how much the Angels have challenged him. On the MLB pipeline here, looking at the Los Angeles Angels top 30 prospects. By the way, number three, Edgar Caro. I think this has a chance to be the best success of the Statline Scouting series at all. I had covered him last year. He was not a well-known name and he is just having an amazing season. As we scroll down here, Coleman Crow is at 23. So he is on the list. He is a Rocket City trash panda. Gotta love that. An undersized right-hander, according to the people at MLB Pipeline, and I think someone worth keeping an eye on, because even though the stats just don't pop out at you, when you take into account his age, when you take into account, you know, he was a 28th round draft pick, it's cool to see. Also, I looked for Coleman Crow on Twitter, and I'm blocked. I don't blame him. I can be annoying on that website sometimes, but I still think you're a good player. You know who does not have me blocked on Twitter is Edward Julian, the next player we're going to talk about. Edward Julian is a left-handed hitting six foot two second baseman, and I'm gonna do maybe scare quotes around second baseman. I see Fangraphs here, according to their 2022 scouting report, has him at a 30 fielding grade out of 35 potential. He's one of those players that they probably just stick him at second base. They're not really sure what to do with him. Maybe he ends up like a corner outfielder. But the thing is, he hits. Edward Julian hits, and he is an 18th round draft pick himself from 2019. Not only is he Canadian, he's the most powerful type of Canadian folks, and that, of course, is French Canadian. The strikeout rates and walk rates he's exhibiting here are just super interesting. I would say it's reminiscent of another prospect that we covered from the Twins by the name of Emmanuel Rodriguez. Unfortunately, I believe he's injured and done for the season. But Edouard Julien, last year in high A, with a 144 WRC+, 29% strikeouts, 19% walks. He hit 15 homers in 65 games, though, and stole 13 bases. This year, similar, but you're seeing some improvements. I really like to see that batting average improve, because when you look at a guy who hits, like, 247 in high A, that you can project that to, like, maybe a 210 in the majors or something like that. And if you bat 210, it's really hard to have a good on-base percentage. You're, you are going to have to continue to walk a lot. And he does continue to walk a lot, but the strikeouts have come down. The, the home runs have also come down a little bit. Same amount of home runs, but in about 100 more plate appearances. But that's making the jump from high A to double A. And the jump from high A to double A is really difficult because really, once you get to double A, you are starting to face some of the top competition in the minors. I think Edward Julian has handled that jump with grace. I suppose it really is the plate discipline, the walks that are the highlight here. Among all players with at least 250 plate appearances in the minors this year, Edward Julian has the 10th highest walk rate. And you'll notice that most of the players ahead of him have played at lower levels in the minors where pitchers might not have as good command or control. Minnesota Twins top 30 prospects now. As you can see, Emmanuel Rodriguez, who we name dropped, comes in at number three for them. If we scroll down here to number 14, there's Edouard Julien, who is, once again, French-Canadian, the most powerful type of Canadian. 
All right, this next player is probably the player I'm most excited to talk about in this video, and that's Kyle Manzardo. And the thing about Kyle Manzardo is, unlike some of these other players we talked about who were late round draft picks, and maybe they have some like hidden brilliance in their statistical profiles, Kyle Manzardo is one of those guys that I'm surprised isn't yet a top 100 prospect on some of these updated lists from the likes of MLB Pipeline or Baseball America. I feel like I would consider him a top 100 prospect based on his performance, but he just hasn't shown up on those types of lists. He's a six foot one left-handed hitting first baseman in the Tampa Bay Rays organization, and just, just look at his offensive numbers in the minors. Just look at them. Look at them with your big, stupid eyes. 2021 only played 13 games in the complex league, so you can't really draw huge conclusions from that, but still 349, 440, 605. But then look at 2022. Look at 2022. In high A, he hit 17 home runs in 63 games. That's an insane pace. He slashes 329, 436, 636. He walks almost as much as he strikes out, about 16% of the time for each. A 181 WRC+. Plus. It's just incredible. And now he has made the move up to double A, which that should be that should be scary. That should be challenging, right? Facing much higher competition. Only played 11 games there so far, but he is slashing 400, 478, 730 for a 1200 OPS, a 203 WRC plus, all while keeping that strikeout rate right in line with what we're seeing in high A. This is special. And you'll note that Steamer, by the way, Cal Manzardo is like a young 22 years old. He turned 22 last month. Steamer already has him projected as an average hitter in Major League Baseball. So if he came up right now, Steamer thinks he could slash 225, 299, 392 for a 102 WRC+. Looking at the MLB pipeline right here, Kyle Manzardo is ranked 6th among the top 30 Tampa Bay Rays prospects. I don't want to act like he hasn't got his due. It's just he's not a top 100 prospect in the eyes of these publications because he's first base only, right? He's not going to derive much value from his base running or his defense. He's just going to have to hit like crazy. However, their second ranked prospect who I covered is a player by the name of Curtis Mead, and he's kind of in a similar situation. I don't really know where he fits in defensively, but they do know he rakes. Curtis Mead rakes, and Kyle Manzardo rakes. We're moving our way down the minor league system. This is a player currently in A-ball. This is Emiliano Teodo. He is a right-handed pitching prospect for the Texas Rangers. So Teodo's an international guy, and a lot of these international guys end up making their debut as teenagers. Maybe they're 17 or 18 years old. He did not get into uh, affiliated baseball until the age of 20. I imagine he was a victim of that 2020 COVID season. Maybe he signed before that, and then he missed all of 2020. So in 2021, he's playing in the complex league. That's a level of rookie ball getting a lot of strikeouts, but this year, this year the transformation is really interesting. As you can see in the complex league last year, 19 games, 29 innings pitched. This year, 19 games, 72 innings pitched. So he's getting more of a starter's workload, which is really interesting. The other really interesting thing about him is just the combination of the ground balls and the swing and miss. And that's what I look for a lot in some of these pitchers. That's like sort of like the Brian Bayo thing. Ground ball percentage, 60% this year, 67% last year and strikeout rate over 30%. There's, you're not going to see a lot of pitchers with a ground ball rate that high, but still that much swing and miss in their game. Well, 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 I have in fact now just done a search for players with a ground ball rate over 60%, strikeout rate over 30%, and at least 60 innings pitched in the minors so far this season. The only players meeting those criteria, Brian Bayo and Emiliano Teodo. Brian Bayo, of course, seen as one of the better pitching prospects in Major League Baseball at the moment, has pitched a fair amount for the Boston Red Sox, and yet here is Emiliano Teodo, a Texas Rangers pitcher, exhibiting at least some of that same flavor. So I decided to do a little bit more research on Emiliano Teodo. He is Dominican. He is indeed part of that January 2020 signing class, so unfortunate to sign then and not being able to de debut an affiliated ball until 2021. He also signed, it looks around the age of 19, which is a little bit older than most of the guys do. A lot of guys really do sign at like 17, so he was maybe closer to like 19, kind of similar to Brian Bayo in that respect as well. I found this tweet from Bryce Patrick. I was actually looking for how much he signed for. I couldn't find that, but I did find this tweet, and it is important. By the way, let me follow him, because this is really an episode more than anything about Twitter etiquette. Um, Emiliano Teodo throws 100, touches 102. So this is a high-velocity guy as well as a high ground ball guy. 
definitely a name to keep an eye on. Here are your Texas Rangers top 30 prospects, a list that of course features names like Leiter and Rocker, as well as Evan Carter who we talked about in the previous episode. As we scroll down here, we can see that Emiliano Teodo comes in at number 23. I just clicked on his bio. It says he signed for $10,000. Just $10,000 out of Dominican Republic. Remained anonymous until he made his pro debut last summer. I love everything about this now. I love everything about this. I also love what I see from this left-handed pitcher in the Arizona Diamondbacks organization. This is Yu Min Lin, and he opened the season in 2022, making his debut in affiliated ball in the Complex League. And that means that he was playing in the United States version of rookie ball rather than the Dominican Republic version of rookie ball. The United States version is a little bit more advanced. The players are a little bit older on average, and he just absolutely tore that league to shreds. Seven games started, 23 innings pitched. He was striking out 16 batters per nine. He was striking out almost half of the batters he faced. His walk rate was low. It was only 7%. His FIP was 1.76. His ground ball rate was over 50%. And the Arizona Diamondbacks said, you know what? We've seen enough. Go on to A-ball. Go on to full season A-ball and finish it off as a young 19-year-old. He turned 19 last month. And so far, he started four games there, and it's also been pretty impressive. The ERA, 4.58, but the peripherals like the FIP and the XFIP closer to that three, that low three range. Really, really cool stuff here from Yu Min Lin. In fact, if you head over to his game log here, it looks like his debut in A-ball versus the Angels affiliate was just incredible. He pitched five innings, he faced 18 batters, only two hits and one walk allowed, and nine strikeouts. That is how you announce yourself as you reach a new level of the minor leagues. Here's the Arizona Diamondbacks top 30. Corbin Carroll, Drew Jones, Jordan Lawler. Oh my gosh, what's just a crazy top of the system to have. Going down here to number 16, we have Yu Min Lin. He does not have a picture. He does not have a picture. He is just anonymous. He's a 5'11 pitcher. Left-handed though, Let's learn a little bit more about him, having played for Chinese Taipei in multiple World Cups. Okay, so I was really curious where he came from. Signed for 525000 last February, and just tearing it up in 2022. By the way, Chinese Taipei is a, another way to say Taiwan. We are now moving on to players who have exclusively played in rookie ball during the 2022 season, which means it's time for the annual disclaimer. It's rookie ball. It's rookie ball. They are so far away from the majors. They are so young. They have so much growing to do. This is such a small sample size of data. The level, the degree of competition varies so much that there are players who will dominate rookie ball this year. They will move on to A ball next year and they will stink. They will stink. The stats are crazy. The stats are all over the place. It's really hard to draw any sort of conclusions like this. However, we're gonna try our best. So the first name we're going to look at here, and I'm afraid it's going to be insensitive because I've tried to look for a pronunciation guide, couldn't find anything close to it, but first name we're looking at here is a player in the Phillies organization. He's 17 years old, and his name is Nikau Puaka Grego. And of those three names, Grego is the one I feel most comfortable with, so he's just going to be Grego for the rest of this video. Grego is 17 years old. Imagine that. 17 years old. He was born in a year called 2004, and he's playing in the Complex League. In the Complex League, as denoted here on Fangraphs by CPX, that means he is playing rookie ball, but he's playing in the United States. And the level of competition rookie ball in the United States versus the Dominican Republic is a little bit higher. The average player is a little bit older. And so our takeaway here is, hey, we have a really young player playing stateside here and slashing 307, 431, 475. We love the guys with the low strikeout rate at just 13%. We also love that he walks as much as he strikes out. And it's really just about a young player with back control playing stateside and putting up a 156 WRC+. The power, three homers in 34 games, not a lot of it, but it can develop. He's only 17. Two stolen bases and two caught stealing. I don't suspect that he's like a freak athlete on the base pass by any means, but definitely a player worth keeping an eye on. That is Grego. Came across this tweet while just trying to do some background research on this player. This is a tweet from the Australia Under-18 team congratulating Grego for signing with the Phillies as well as a couple other Australians for signing with the Reds and the Dodgers. This is from January 2022, so we know that he was part of that January 2022 signing class. 
And just biographically, I know that Grego represented Australia at the youth levels. However, I also know he was born in New Zealand. And just looking at his name, which again is very hard for me to pronounce, I don't really know how to do it. I don't want to be insensitive. Uh, but this is a name that I would imagine is uh, Maori or, or indigenous to New Zealand. And one reason why that biographical information or that information like his signing bonus, for example, is not easy for me to find at the moment is here because we're here on the MLB Pipeline Philadelphia Phillies Top 30 Prospects list. We are scrolling, we are scrolling, and our guy Grego is nowhere to be found. However, I do think he's a name worth remembering and certainly a name worth knowing how to pronounce. Okay, and now for something completely different. You know, we love our undersized plate discipline guys on Statline Scouting. We love our undersized ground ball pitchers. This is something completely different. This is Jose Gerardo, who is an outfielder in the Miami Marlins system. He is six foot one, 179, and he is tooled up, and he is striking out 30% of the time, and he does not care. Jose Gerardo, by the way, a young 17 years old, I should mention, a young 17, just turned 17 this summer. He has spent his summer in the Dominican Summer League, where he has 11 home runs and 16 stolen bases in 48 games. That's what it comes down to. I don't care that he's striking out 31% of the time. He has 11 home runs and 16 stolen bases in 48 games. He is demonstrating his athleticism, and he's also showing some discipline as well because he is walking 15% of the time for a 424 on base percentage, 161 WRC+. Plus. This is Jose Gerardo. He's not here to be your under-the-radar guy. He is here to be your next superstar? Question mark? Here are all the players age 17 or younger with at least 10 home runs this season. There's only four of them. There's only four of them, and Jose Gerardo is one of them. And of those, he has by far the most stolen bases. He has 16 stolen bases to complement his 11 home runs. It's more than twice as many as the next guy, Eric Bautista, who's in the Colorado Rockies system. Tooled up. And here's your Marlins top 30, according to MLB Pipeline. Really fun system. A lot, a lot of fun names here. Jose Gerardo comes in at 20th, and we get some biographical information here to go with it. Jose Gerardo, no picture up yet. He's just in rookie ball, folks, but signed for 180000 out of the Dominican Republic, and this really stood out to me. Clocked at a 102-mile-per-hour throw from the outfield as an amateur, so just big bat. He's fast. He has an incredible outfield arm. He's Jose Gerardo. He's tooled up. We'll have to see how he does as he moves on into the higher levels of the minors. We're going to wrap things up with Omar Gonzalez, a 6'4 right-handed pitching prospect who turned 17 just a month ago. 17 just a month ago, he pitches for the New York Yankees Dominican Summer League affiliate. And that is especially relevant because Omar Gonzalez is from Panama. Of course, that is where Mariano Rivera came from, famously. They are fellow countrymen. As we scroll down here into the stats for Omar Gonzalez, there's really only one thing I'm focusing on, and that's the strikeouts. He's struck out 16 batters per nine in 20 innings pitched in the Dominican League. That is a 47% strikeout rate for him. He has struck out nearly half the batters he's faced. And one thing that has really informed my philosophy about stat line scouting is the lower you go, the lower levels you go to, the more I look at strikeouts. And as they go into the higher levels, I can worry about the wogs. I can worry about the ground ball rate, but you need to establish if these guys just have an electric arm or not. And as they get older into more advanced levels of the minors, they can learn more, more of that like pitchability type skill set. But right now, I just like the strikeouts, 47% strikeout rate. If you move over to Omar's game log, you'll see that he hasn't pitched since July 16th. So really, he's doing this all as a 16-year-old. It's pretty unbelievable. And only in that game did he finally allow a run. So really incredible stuff from Omar Gonzalez. 0.44 ERA, 47% strikeout rate. I don't know if the Yankees shut him down just because he's so young or they shut him down because of injury. I don't know if he'll pitch again this season. I couldn't really find any information on it, but that's Omar Gonzalez just striking out half the batters he faces as a 16-year-old. These are your top strikeout rates by pitcher in the Dominican Summer League. You can see Omar Gonzalez leads the way among pitchers with at least 20 innings pitched. But what really stands out here, once again, is the age. Look at the age compared to everyone else on this leaderboard. He's like two, three years younger than them. It's really impressive. Same thing if you go look at swinging strike rate. On that one, he is third. But again, trailing a 20-year-old and a 17-year-old, he's, he's, he did this as a 16-year-old. 
I dug up this tweet from Eli Fishman. Once again, we're going to do good Twitter etiquette. Give him the follow. He's doing the Lord's work here, tweeting these things out. This is from January 2022, so we know Omar was part of that class. He signed for 135000 out of Panama. He was not the crown jewel of their signing class. That appears to be Mr. Roderick Arias, who signed out of the Dominican Republic for $4 million. You could have gotten yourself 30 Omar Gonzalez's, Yankees. And finally, here's the Yankees' top 30 prospects, according to MLB Pipeline. Omar Gonzalez is not on there. So... That's going to wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for watching.